We begin tonight with our southern border bracing for a surge in migrant crossings. That's with the end of Title 42 now just three days away. People from 168 countries reportedly waiting here at our gates. Backlash, however, is building from critics over the federal government's lack of response to the crisis. KUSI's Dan Plant is live behind the Las Americas Outlet Mall, where, Dan, I can imagine things are already getting busy, only going to get busier. Yes, well, actually, we were kicked out from the back of the Las Americas Outlet Mall because it's private property. And we were there for a while. We took some pictures. We'll show those to you in a moment. But essentially, right behind the mall and up on that hill, there is a processing center where immigrants are being processed as we speak. And if you just turn the camera around, give you an idea of exactly where that is. Here is the line, of course, to get into TJ from the United States, from San Diego. But as you pan to the right, you see the mall. And right in between where these lanes are going and that mall is where the immigrants are being processed as we speak. It is a crazy situation that is about to get even crazier. Take a look. By the time the immigrants make their journey to the U.S.-Mexico border, they are exhausted, they are starving, and confused about what to do next. In this case, a group of Good Samaritans has greeted them at the border wall with San Diego with food, water, and some kind words of advice. Come this Thursday, when Title 42 expires, this could be the scene we will be seeing for a long time to come. We keep using the word surge as though it's a tide that's going to go back out naturally. It just isn't. The immigration crisis may be concentrated along the southern borders with Mexico, but make no mistake, this is a national crisis. Eventually, will reach almost every state and every major city in America. Whether it's true or not, the word is out. President Joe Biden has laid out the welcome mat, and the world is responding. And whether it's two million a year or three million or four million, there's no end in sight, and with the end of uh, Title 42, uh, it simply means that this administration has an excuse to increase the amount of people welcomed here through what some might call the back door. For most people, the immigration crisis is something you only see on TV or maybe you read about on the Internet. Well, here in San Diego, it is front and center in living color. This is a processing center behind the Las Americas Outlet Mall in San Isidro, just a small window into the future under this administration. What, what Biden did was say that Trump was a racist, so everything Trump did therefore had to be reversed. Uh, and we've got now five and a half million legal aliens in the country, don't know who they are, don't know where they are, uh, and they are a, a threat to jobs, uh, public safety, health, education, health care, all these kinds of things. So I would put back the Trump policies that worked so effectively before Joe Biden reversed them. In the political world, of course, no one takes any blame. Republicans point fingers at Democrats and vice versa. Congress points fingers at the president and vice versa. It's ugly, and the current immigration policies will not change until something changes in Washington. We would love to negotiate where how to get out of this problem, but it can't start off with he's just fine with open borders and then lying to the American people and saying that uh, the border is sealed. We in San Diego can certainly see the border isn't sealed. That is for sure. Congressman Darrell Issa there. And again, only three days to go until Title 42 expires. And there is just absolutely not enough people in the Border Patrol, in the federal government, to really be able to deal with this. I understand that, you know, they do have a couple of plans on streamlining and that kind of thing. But, you know, uh, it is going to be really overwhelming over here. They're just outnumbered. I mean, they're outnumbered. The Border Patrol, all the people who take care of these things, they're completely outnumbered uh, by what's going on out here. And again, and Esther is going to maybe touch on this again a little bit more as you talk to her in a minute. But if it's not Joe Biden or the message from Joe Biden saying, hey, yeah, come on in, the water's fine. The cartels have their own websites. They have their own social media. And they're putting things out on social media, essentially inviting everybody to come on in because this is the Cartel Full Employment Act, right? This is the area where they control every single thing that goes through here. Whether it's a smuggler or a cartel member, you have to pay to get through. Nothing happens on the border without the cartel. So this is clearly a cartel operation. And of course, the cat and mouse. You got the people over here and the drugs coming in here. It's just ugly. Yes, we have compassion for these people who travel thousands of miles just to stand at this gate for a hope, a hope of freedom. 
someday. Uh, we obviously have compassion for these people, but what's happening these days, what's happening right now, is just absolutely out of control. A lot of fake news going on out there, both from our government and, of course, the cartels telling everybody to come on in because the cartels are making billions of dollars off of this. Again, Cartel Full Employment Act. Anyway, you got Esther. Esther knows a lot about this. I'm going to pass it back to you guys. Yeah, Dan, I'm curious, can you paint a picture for people right now where you are? What is the mood? What is the energy like? Is it just not a business as usual or is it worse as you get closer to the border? Can you just step people through kind of what you're seeing from your vantage point right now? Well, yeah, on our side of the border, you don't see anything. You have to actually go and look for it on the other side of the border. But as you're driving around and suddenly you'll see a group of migrants, um, you really have to go to the border wall. We're not really seeing anything on the interior. I'm not seeing an extraordinary number of migrants walking around town right now like they were during the coronavirus when they were dropping them off at bus stations and saying good luck. Uh, but no, I mean, it's not really that different on the U.S. side of the border, but certainly just on the other side of the fence, it is absolutely a different universe. But you do have to go looking for it. Plant, we will check back in with you. As you mentioned, we're going to be speaking to Esther Valdez Clayton here in a moment. Thanks so much.